Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video with me, Coach Sierra. I am the Research and Assessment Specialist with Academic Coaching for World Changers, and today we're going to talk about learning styles and inventory. So learning styles and inventory, what are you talking about? Well, did you know that there are different learning styles? And if you can find out which one works best for you, then you can better study. Some of you in my individual sessions have talked about, I just don't really know how to study Coach Sierra. Flashcards don't really work for me. Listening to videos doesn't really work for me. Uh, writing down notes doesn't really work for me, depending on who you are, depending on your learning style. So today we're going to talk about a couple of different ways you can study, cover a couple different learning styles that might be your learning style. Maybe you're a mixture between the two. So sit tight, take some notes, and we're going to talk about learning styles and expose you to a learning style inventory. Now, as always, I just want to make sure you all have this information. If you have any questions about this video, other videos, or you want to reach out for booking sessions, you can email me at Sierra Turner, A-C-F-W-C at gmail.com. We also have our Dr. Pam 2020 at gmail.com. Both of those emails will work great and you'll get a quick prompt response. All right. So let's dive in. This is an example of a learning style inventory that we send out to clients. I'm going to take a moment and read off the questions. You can then rate yourself or answer the questions on your own. And then the rest of this video will be a bit more applicable to you. So if you don't know your learning style, I would stop, pause here, take these eight questions and then continue. It won't take you that long. If you already know your learning style, then just sit tight. Maybe you pick up some new skills that you didn't know before that work best with your learning style. So if you were to receive this document, you would circle the statement that works best for you. But in this case, you just want to maybe write it down on a spare sheet of paper or maybe put notes in your phone. So question one, if I have to learn how to do something, I learn best when I watch Someone show me how, hear someone tell me how, or try to do it myself. Question two, when I read, I often find that I visualize what I am reading in my mind's eye, read out loud or hear the words inside my head, or fidget and try to feel the content. Question three, when asked, to give directions, I see the actual places in my mind and I say them or prefer to draw them, have no difficulty in giving them verbally, have to point or move my body at them. Question four, if I'm unsure how to, I write it in order to determine if it looks right, I spell it out loud in order to determine if it sounds right. I write it in order to determine if it feels right. Question five, when I write, I am concerned with how neat and well-spaced my letters and words appear. Often say the words and letters to myself, push hard on my part or pencil, it can feel the flow of the words. If I had, sorry, next question, question six. If I had to remember a list of items, I would remember them best if I wrote them down, said them over and over to myself, move around and use my fingers to name each item. I prefer teachers who are Coach Sierra. No, I'm just kidding. That's not the question. Question seven says, I prefer teachers who use a board or overhead projector while they lecture, talk with lots of expression, or use hands-on activities. Question eight, when trying to concentrate, I have a difficult time when there's a lot of clutter or movement in the room, there's a lot of noise in the room, I have to sit still for any length of time. All right, so those are eight questions you can see. 
there's other different learning style inventories that you can take. This is one that is short and sweet and gets to the point, but there are several others if you don't feel this one best matches uh, the answers that you were hoping to see. But you also might be surprised. Maybe you thought this whole time you were an auditory processor, but really you're a visual learner. So take this inventory if you haven't already and then hang tight for the details to come. So if you're a visual learner, here are some study strategies that would work best for you. Writing things down because you remember them better that way. Making a study area visually appealing. Looking at people and professors when they talk. Most visual learners study better by themselves because they need to focus on the image in front of them. Auditory processors work great with other people because they're bouncing back and forth, out loud processing, receiving in that intake. And visual learners tend to wanna be by themselves so they can best take in that information. Visual learners also really thrive taking thorough notes in lectures when studying textbooks. Usually they want their notes to be visually appealing. So for a visual learner, if your notes are too sloppy, you're gonna wanna rewrite them because it's not uh, sinking in when it's too messy or too sloppy. My kinesthetic learners, so kinesthetic like to use their body as a part of the learning process. They use all the manipulative study strategies you can think of. This might look like writing, but making visuals, concept maps, timelines, charts, and graphs, but really you're getting into that material. So this almost looks like an artist when they're done. They've got color pencils and crafts and scissors and uh, maybe construction paper. They've really put their whole body and whole senses into the learning process. Using the movement of your body to increase attention to your study. When I was younger, when I was doing a kinesthetic learning style, I remember being a part of a spelling bee and I would jump rope spelling my words. That way I had some sort of body movement on top of trying to learn these difficult words. I identify as a visual kinesthetic, so I need to see it, I need to write it, but I also need to engage with it, with that visual component. I am not an auditory processor whatsoever. You know, when people are trying to share with you some drama from their friends and they're sharing out loud the text messages and they read the text messages out loud, my senses cannot do that. I need to see it myself. I need to read it out loud myself, but don't read it to me. Don't give me instructions auditorily. I will not remember. I will 100% let you down if there's some sort of action that needs to follow, but you write it on a piece of paper. I'll keep that piece of paper on me, or maybe I'll write my own piece of paper and we'll be good to go. Other things for kinesthetic learners, they look for participation activities with other students to enhance their learning. That might underline main points an eye arresting color, for example, neon highlighters. So it's not just the visual outcome of seeing things highlighted, but it's the act of highlighting itself. My auditory learners, they'll try studying with a friend so they can talk out loud and hear the information. Recite out loud the things you want to remember. They might read an assignment for 25 minutes, but then stop because they cannot take in more auditory processing. Remember, after you do 25 minutes, this is now getting shorter and shorter. We used to say study for 45 minutes, but now we're seeing um, those times decrease because of our attention shortage. So they might read an assignment for 25 minutes, then pause, synthesize that information, and then begin studying again. When beginning a textbook chapter, you might read the summary to get a general idea of the information, then begin reading, and probably reading out loud. Now we've gone some redundancy. So we've just now briefly reviewed the way the visual, the auditory, and the kinesthetic now learn. I'm now going through the rest of the slides just to give you some other tips. So visual le learners, use color coding, incorporate diagrams and mind maps, utilize videos and visual aids, and study in a quiet, well-lit environment. Our kinesthetic learners, incorporate physical activities, use real-world examples, hands-on learning, and teach others. Our auditory processors use mnemonic devices, listen to recorded lectures, participate in group discussions, and use background music. Those things really help auditory processors. 
Okay, so by the end of this video, you should know more about your learning style. You should have tips and tricks and very effective habits that you're going to take on with you to prepare for your exam. And maybe any other tasks that you might have. And of course, if you have any questions, here's the emails. CRTurnerACFWC at gmail.com as well as DrPam2020 at gmail.com. Both of them will give you the same results. You can book individual sessions, get any answers you might have to any questions from this video, and get to know more about our services at Academic Coaching for World Changers. Thank you and have a very great day, everyone.